This is serious. This is the biggest threat to human rights in the 21st century. And uh, we must do something. It's very difficult. I mean, we don't naturally think this far ahead. But the trouble is, we are having effects which will last for centuries. The carbon dioxide that goes into the atmosphere stays for centuries. I mean, it does seem like a natural science issue, but it's also a social justice issue. If it was only politics or policies and or economics or te the technical solutions, uh, the, the public or the citizens were not involved enough. And maybe that is the real chance now that social sciences are included. We heard so much about debate, about transition, about learning from each other. So this is really important for the social sciences. I think now in my own talking about climate justice, I'll put even more emphasis on energy efficiency and reducing demand as part of the responsibility of the industrialized world. And at the same time, I also want access to energy, clean energy, for the very large proportion of our world who don't have access to electricity or don't have clean cooking. That to me is outrageous because now we have the solutions. So a lot of climate justice is about opportunities. I think the whole turn towards reading climate crisis as a crisis of human hierarchy is a major step forward if we can achieve it. People often believe that human rights doesn't really have anything to do with the distant future. You know, we think it's about political prisoners and torture and so on, which of course it also is. But I think basically a concern with human rights is a concern that vulnerable people should be protected and uh, no one is, is more vulnerable than the people of the future because they're going to have to live with, with the institutions we leave them with. The future belongs to young people. Uh, we need to hold the old generation to account, but it's the baby boomers who will vote. Young people do not vote. And that's a structural problem when we face these long-term issues. I mean, we are asking the retired generation who are doing well from their pensions and from health care to give up some of their privileges uh, in order to benefit their grandchildren. I came to climate change very much from a human rights perspective. I saw the negative impact it was having on poor farmers, on rural communities, on inner cities. So I'd want people to start thinking about the centrality of the corporation and its privileges and the fact that we need to address that head on and perhaps re-engineer the corporation to get a more balanced representative legal response that actually more fairly balances the interests of corporations with vulnerable living human beings. So far its discussion is very much lobby driven by certain industries. Of course, introducing any structural change to our energy system requires you know, a change to our industries as well. So jobs will move from here to there. So far, I don't see the signs of, of changing uh, this attitude. Because the conflicts among countries and group of countries are so, so big uh, that it's very difficult to receive the uh, agreement uh, among 190 countries. So far I'm rather skeptical to be honest. We're not really, uh, we're not really challenging our way of living, our lifestyle and I think that is or should be at the core of a, of a really effective climate policy. There's no way around it, we have to tackle it, it's there, it's a big task, it's going to take us a couple of years but I'm confident with this kind of, with these kinds of events where we bring together different practitioners researchers, stakeholders, we can actually find solutions that can work for us. You know, academics like to talk about when self-interest and morality clash, and of course they do sometimes clash, but they do sometimes overlap, and, and I think they do overlap in a, quite a number of the things we need to do about climate. Uh, we must educate, educate, educate uh, the people. The combination of good research, good scientific knowledge, but a very human approach, human-centered and acknowledging that there is an injustice about the way climate affects um, was so part of every speech, I think, uh, that I was really very struck. I think we can mobilize constituencies now um, to give us the urgency to ensure that at the political level the right decisions will be taken. 
after after these two days, yes, I'm much more optimistic because I've I've seen so many, especially young people, really passionate about it and and uh, arguing and discussing with each other and finding coalition partners and um, bet between the, the technician, the, the more technical side, the politics side, the human rights side, so I'm much more optimistic now.